Hey, Thrive Loud fans, Lou Diamond here. We are living in tough, often confusing times, and there are a lot of social issues out there. And I think everyone is beginning to understand the importance of addressing and talking about these issues. Prank Shop has a simple mission, to talk about the things that matter, lend a hand to those in need, and have fun all the while. The team at Prank Shop provides their community with something to wear that they care about, create a dialogue, and spread the word in a positive, affirmative tone. So check out all of their clothing and accessories that literally spell out the issues that everyone is talking about. Their quotes, sayings, and messages are true conversation starters and make great gifts for the holiday season. Head on over to prankshop.com and use the promo code THRIVELOUD to get free shipping throughout the holiday season. Prank Shop, we've got issues. Lou Diamond, always bright, always shining, from the light shining off his bald head. Today on Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. So my journey is one of those, like there are a lot of detours, there's a lot of going off on the side roads. Um, I started off as a bailiff, and then my first job, I was in the communications department of the public, um, I was in the communications department of the American Correctional Association. You don't need to play it safe. This was spectacular. I mean, I'm going to be really honest, so I hope you don't mind. Um, yeah, that's what we want. And there will be bumps in the road. There will be twists and turns. Um, <laughs> you needed moxie on the floor and, and volume. <laughs> it's the results and the connections and the improvement, the impact we have on other people's life. And that's when life becomes exciting. Who do you turn to personally to get back on the thriving track? I was really, really interested in how the world works. Thanks for the great introduction. It was really very simple. I just read part of your bio. Be brief, be bright, be gone. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. Today on Thrive Loud, we bring you a messaging and marketing guru, an entrepreneur at her core. She has also founded a business that might be the best way to know someone you met online is safe to meet offline and assure them that you are too. Thrive Loud listeners, I have the founder and CEO of Safety Pin Technologies, Jenny Thompson. Jenny, how are you today? I'm great, Lou. How are you? I am doing spectacular. Thrive Loud listeners need to know that I had the extreme pleasure to dine with Jenny, along with many other people, in a very fun networking dinner here in New York City. And... I briefly learned about Jenny's business, which I thought was one of the more unique ideas and companies and technologies out there. So I think it's going to be important, Jenny, to share with the Thrive Loud listeners a little bit of your journey, and then we're going to bleed into what you're doing now because I think it's really important, relevant, and useful. So can you start off by sharing just a quick fast forward version of how we got from where you were to where you are today? Absolutely. Um, I will just say that was a great dinner. And one of the pieces of advice I always give people is accept every invitation, take every meeting, take every phone call, because you never know what amazing people you're going to meet. And and this is an exact, uh, exactly why I do that. So it was terrific meeting you and getting to talk to you. And I'm so happy to be here with you today. Um, the interesting thing about my journey is it started in kind of the most unlikely of places. My very first job, I was a bailiff in a courthouse. And <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, so my journey is one of those, like there are a lot of detours. There's a lot of going off on the side roads. Um, I started off as a bailiff and then my first job, I was in the communications department of the public. Um, I was in the communications department of the American Correctional Association representing. Wait, I just want to, I just want to interject Danny, because when people think bailiff, they think night court and they think bull. <laughs> if you want to take the exact opposite of what that would be, that would be Danny Thompson, somebody who's the bailiff in the court. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I'm a five foot two redhead, um, not bald, but actually be, because of that 
um, when I was a bailiff, people's court was still very popular and everybody would call me rusty. So uh, right. the people that knew right. me would go with rusty instead of bull. But yes. Yeah, so um, and I always say people look at me like I'm insane when I say it was a bailiff. So my response to that is always all rise. The fifth district court and four printers accounting state of Maryland is now in session. The Honorable C. Philip, C. Philip Nichols, Jr. presiding. You may be seated. Um, <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. I did it every day for a while. Um, and then my, my first job. So I did that job when I was in college. I took a year off and I, I was a bailiff for a while and then I went to night school, um, not night court, night school. Uh, and yeah. when I came back, when I graduated college, I my first job was with the American Correctional Association representing law enforcement officials who worked in prisons. And after that, I worked at the American Motor Vehicle Administrators Association. So it was kind of this strange, I was involved in a lot of law enforcement background and decisions, even though I really was focused on marketing throughout my career. But that's my early career. And as I advanced, I ended up at a company that that some of your listeners may know called Agora, that yeah. is well known in the financial and health publishing industries as a direct-to-consumer contrarian publisher. And I ran the, the health business there. Um for almost 20 years. I, I was hired at the com at the company as a marketing director for one of the financial groups. And in about a year and a half, I was promoted to be the CEO of the health group. I took that business from about 2 million to 70 million and was wow. responsible for the launches of all the supplement companies and the acquisition of the skincare company, taking us from a strict publishing model to a, a more product-based model. And also I was responsible for migrating us from 100% direct mail marketing to 100% online marketing. And um, just to give a little bit of the highlight of my career there, I the first year that I ran the health business, I increased profits 500%. I never wow. had two down years in a row. Any down year was actually followed by a record-breaking year. So we had one year where our profits were only about four and a half percent. Um, and the following year I increased that 400%. I I'm very much that let's look at what we have to do and how to correct. And with all of that financial success, the thing I'm actually the most proud of is that over a 20 year career, I average less than one voluntary resignation a year. I think oh, wow. building a team and creating a culture and giving people opportunity is actually the thing I'm the most proud of more so than posting profits. Although I, I think they're intertwined. I think you build a yeah. more profitable business when your team feels like they're listened to and respected and part of what you're building. But the, um, the fact that people felt uh, honored and respected and listened to, and we still had a thriving business, I think was a, a great combination. And the thing that I'm the most proud to point to. Awesome. So from there, you, you've always had this entrepreneurial spirit. Um, can you share a little bit of, as you left that world and started looking into something else, um, as I understand it, there's a unique story behind eventually what led to what you're doing now. There is. So I had decided to leave the company. Um, I, one of the things I say is when it's not the thing that makes you jump out of bed every morning, it's time to get out of the way and let the next generation have their opportunity. And so I left the company actually not knowing what I was going to do. I did a little bit of consulting for a while. And when I was celebrating a milestone birthday, I, I took myself on a big trip and I had hired a pet sitter off of Craigslist who I had met. She was a lovely college student. My dogs liked her. She had I, got, I checked references and everything was seemed great. I went away to Tahiti for nine days. <laughs> and when I got back, um, my carpet was completely stained in one room. And I realized the dog's beds were missing. And as I started to kind of put things together, I realized the fitted sheets were still perfectly folded and that she had never slept in my house. And so I started to realize she must have left the dogs here by themselves for a while and then come back and gotten them and taken them somewhere else. And I had prepaid her to watch them the following week. So when she came to bring their beds back, I told her that she wasn't going to work for me anymore and that she had to pay me back the $150 I had paid her for the following week. And um, rather than, than honor the agreement that we had come up with, which was she would pay me $25 a week for six weeks, 
uh, that was on a Thursday. The following Tuesday, I get a text from somebody pretending to be her dad saying that she's huh. been in this horrible car accident and she's on life support and they don't know if she's going to make it. And, and just a quick side note for your listeners. And they hoped it wasn't too inconvenient for me as an employer. So, oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. So my BS meter. No, it was ridiculous. I still have the text and my BS meter went off obviously. Um, but there's this part of you that thinks, I just, I can't imagine somebody would do this. So the 10% of me thought I have to treat this like she's been in a horrible accident. And 90% of me thought this is complete BS. I Googled the accident. I checked her Facebook page. There, there was no indication. And so I would, I texted back and said, Oh, this is horrible. Please keep me posted. And then the next day I got a text that said her kidneys have shut down and, and they're swelling on her brain and it's not looking good. Um, and again, I'm, I'm checking social media. I'm realizing there's no indication that there's been any accident at all. So that was on a Tuesday. Every day I'm getting some kind of update. And on Saturday morning, I texted the girl's phone number and just said, can you be here at 10 o'clock to uh, walk the dogs? And then I immediately texted the other phone number and said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I, I hate to disturb you. She's still in my phone as dog sitter. And I just sent the text to the wrong number. At which point I got back a text that was so pricelessly college student and not parent that it, it made everything so obvious. The text said, you're fine. She passed away this morning. (laughs) I thought that is not how any parent. So she faked her own death (laughs) to avoid paying something. Own death to avoid paying $150. Um, And then uh, and, and then there was like crazy follow up where they told me like they're only accepting condolence cards till June 19th, which I guess is when they had to leave their university housing. But it was just it was such a crazy story that over one hundred fifty dollars, this girl would fake her own death. Um, so, and so, so I, yeah, well, I was going to inter- interject. So, so basically yeah. what, the experience that you hit was you, you you ran into somebody that you could not trust and. What did this feel like to you? Like when this experience of, uh, I'm obviously you were having a little bit of play fun, like doing the decoding work, recognizing that she right. wasn't, you know, <laughs> wasn't really dead, but more right. notably <laughs> the, the, the feeling of being <laughs> screwed over and knowing you were dealing with something dishonest. What did that feel like to you? So I'm very focused on justice. Justice has always been a big motivator yeah. for me. And, and the idea that this girl was kind of, getting away with my $150 was, it it wasn't the amount of money. It could have been a dollar. It could have been 150,000. I would have had the same reaction and it was really negative. And the, uh, but the bigger and more important part was I was really worried about what my dogs had been put through. Nine days is a long time and I don't know where they stayed. I don't know who they were with and they're fine, but I do have one dog that's pretty anxious. And I, I think about it still today. And then the obvious extension of that is, these were just my dogs. What if I had left children with this woman? Like how, how do you know whether you can trust me? She came over to my house the very first time she was in a college sweatshirt and a ponytail and sitting on the floor with my dogs and they were climbing all over her. And I tend to think they're pretty good judges of character. Um, and she was respectful and she was smart and her grades were good. And she worked at three different jobs and she was, she actually was a swim coach for mentally challenged children. And mm. I ended up calling that job afterward and saying, look, you have no reason to know that I'm telling you the truth or to believe me, but she should not be around children because this happened. And as this evolved, I started thinking about what I was going to do in the future. And I kept thinking about that swim job. And this girl was supposed to be taking care of other people's children. And people were trusting her with children that some of them probably couldn't articulate properly if they didn't feel safe or if she right. did something that scared them. And that is what led to me starting safety pin. And the idea so, behind so the, safety and, pin. And this, oh. Yeah. Before, before you go in, I love this because yeah. you took your, literally your role in the justice system. <laughs> um, the the <laughs> meaning of what justice is to you, the feeling of an experience that, that you've had and recognize that there's a need To really, I mean, in the sense of doing the right due diligence, the background checks and ways to know that how can you trust somebody that you meet online, no matter what the situation is, what are the things that are there? 
and, and I think this is a great bump set and spike here. So help me, help me nail this ball over the net. What then <laughs> happened next? So I started meeting with people in law enforcement and specifically with a couple of criminal profilers and talking about how can you figure out who you can trust and what are the requirements? You know, a lot of people look at background checks and the truth is 40% of crimes go unreported and 70% of sex crimes go unreported. And if you think about the way people are using the internet, it's not just hiring a pet sitter. It's hiring babysitters, handymen, going on dates, renting your home to somebody, renting a home from somebody. There are all these situations that 99% of the time work out great. And 1% of the time, there is something dangerous and nefarious at play. Right. And knowing that you are letting somebody into your home that can be trusted, somebody letting somebody around your children, or again, the flip side, renting a home from somebody that you can trust. You know, we've seen these horror stories about Airbnb hosts who have cameras up everywhere and, <laughs> um, and, and not to protect their homes, but to peep on the people that are in their homes. So we looked at, at the things that indicate whether somebody puts you at risk and developed a four pronged methodology to determine whether somebody was somebody that you should trust in your home, around your family and, and with your, with, with your possessions. Um, and by consulting with criminal profilers and leading minds in law enforcement and leading minds in psychology, a clinical psychologist from one of the top universities in the world, a forensic psychologist from the federal prison system, who is also a skilled hostage negotiator, the former head of White House security, who's been in the Secret Service under four different presidents, who told me they have three seconds to decide if someone is delusional or dangerous, hmm. and, and two criminal profilers from the NYPD. And so working with all of these people, we put together this four-pronged methodology for determining whether somebody should be awarded a safety pin. Okay, so, so so let me let me clarify. So so the safety pin from a user point of view, if if I'm online, um, and and or or if I'm if I'm if, if I'm a dog sitter and I'm going mm -hmm. to offer my services up, tell me what this pin actually looks like, feels like is 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 how how I'd actually apply for it and how it, how we put it to use. So it's a virtual trust badge. If you think about like the blue verified check that says right. to people, yes, this really is Lou Diamond. It has that, um, it's, it's that concept, but it has so much more behind it. So we do an identity verification. We do a criminal background check. We do a financial background screening because while physical danger is certainly the biggest risk, a lot of people get scammed on the internet and we want to make sure that your Nigerian prince is really a prince. Um, <laughs> So, very, very funny. <laughs> uh, and, and so we do the financial review as well. And then we have a proprietary behavioral review algorithm that we've built with these clinical and forensic psychologists so we can identify if somebody has behavior like my dog sitter that would make them likely to victimize another person. When you pass all four parts of our requirement, you get awarded a unique safety pin. It is a personal identification number. So that you don't have to share any of your personal information with somebody. They don't need to run an independent background check. It's a way of saying you can choose me because you can trust me. And the other thing about the safety pin, the actual badge, um, it's date and time stamp to the second. So that means the person is still in good standing with us. And we rerun people regularly, unlike most background checks that are one and done. So we will rescreen people, and if they no longer meet our requirements, we revoke the safety pin. And okay, so this is so this because is pretty, it's alive. Yeah, no, this is pretty cool. So you've created um, a a way. To, now, now I guess I'm going to ask a couple of questions here. If if I want to utilize a safety pin, I want to go get that dog sitter and have them in there. Am I going to a safety pin website, or is? Tell me how I'm connecting to the safety pin information so I know that I'm dealing with somebody that's troublesome from a from a user point of view. Like you want to check to make sure I'm going to be a good dog sitter for your dog. So I want to be really clear. It is only a positive indicator. Right. There are a lot of reasons somebody might not get a safety pin and we don't want to be in the reputation destruction game. 
So it. you can, if somebody is working for you, you can say to them, I'd like you to get a safety pin or do you have a safety pin? And if they give you their safety pin ID, you can verify on our website that that is actually theirs. If they yep. have the live badge on their site, then it is 100% guaranteed that it belongs to that person. We also have a downloadable badge for websites like Facebook won't render our live badge right now. So that's the way that you can verify it, but there's no indicator that a person applied for a safety pin and didn't get it. And the metaphor that I like to share here is TSA pre-check. So TSA pre-check is a shorter line. You don't have to take your shoes off. You don't have to take your laptop out. You've said, I'm going to be pre-screened so that you know you can trust me. And then the rest of the screening is very limited. There Got are it. all these people in the other line that don't have pre-check. They're still allowed on the plane. It's just a much more arduous check. So think about this as the fast track, the fast lane to trust. And then the people in the other side um, they just don't have this verification. Wow. And the reason they don't have it, there could be multiple reasons they don't have it. So we're very careful about, about not having a way to look somebody up that they applied and were declined. It's only a positive indicator. Okay. So I love this. And from a, from a, from a marketing and messaging point of view, which is where your communication skills obviously come in, this is a behavior change actually from the buyer, right? I want to make sure that you have that particular safety pin really is the, is the method that you want people to do. And then it makes the service provider need to go apply and get one. Um, so from your business point of view, talk to me about how you're going to raise the awareness of safety pin technologies. I'm curious from a marketing and messaging and a connecting point of view, how you're going to highlight and feature this really important I love the TSA pre-check um, analogy. Um, added badge to know that you're dealing with somebody that has been checked out and, and is better potentially, or at least, like you said, it's it's a positive only way of looking at them. How are you going to educate those that will say, hey, I really got to make sure that they should get a safety pin? We're working with um, a handful of apps right now where we're part of their onboarding process. And we're reaching out. Our goal is to be on every major platform as an option so that as you're signing up, they can say, would you like to add a safety pin to your profile? You can apply here. We we actually want to be ubiquitous, but we don't want to necessarily be a requirement. And so the idea that you could go to rover.com or care.com and filter by people who have safety pins or see that somebody has a safety pin on their profile, that is the long-term goal. Right now, we're working with influencers. We're getting the word out through uh, social media. And we're also pointing out situations that are happening in the news where a safety pin would have prevented it. And there's a story right now that happened in New York City. A, um, a babysitter that was found on one of the major sites and had great reviews. And it's one of the things we like to point out that reviews really don't have a safety indicator. They are right. more about whether the person showed up on time, whether your kid liked them, whether they left the house clean. Um, this sitter had great reviews, good references. And at the same time, she kidnapped this little boy from New York City to Ramsey, New Jersey to set her ex-boyfriend's car on fire. Oh my goodness. The police were called to the hotel and she lied about the family's name. So the parents couldn't even get their baby back right away. And that kind of behavioral flag is something that we certainly would have been able to catch because somebody who would ever go to that extreme would not pass our screening. And so if this is a situation, if you could fast forward a year and safety pin were part of the conversation and the mom could have said, this is great. We'd love to have you come work for us. I just need to see your safety pin before that, before we bring you on board. She wouldn't have had one. And then right. even if you still want to work with that sitter, you can have the conversation about, did they apply? Why didn't they get one? Um, and, and I think that there are a lot of instances like this where we're able to create awareness around the importance of safety pin in these situations that could have been avoided. We see a lot of it with online dating that people yeah. are, are creating false identities, not just in the catfishing way, but they're luring people to signs to scenes of crimes. They're actually having somebody come to their house and then holding them up at gunpoint. There are men pretending to be women 
there's so many situations where a fake identity is not just about whether the woman's 20 pounds heavier or 20 years older than she says she is, but really somebody that is too dangerous for you to interact with. And so the other thing about safety pin, I, since I'm bringing up the dating example, is once you sign up for safety pin, your safety pin membership goes can go anywhere. So you can use it on, on your profile, on every social media site, every home rental site, every dating site, if you're task rabbit, babysitting, anywhere. Yeah. And so it's a it's a one time membership and a one time pin that you can use everywhere. It's like if you had that verified check and you didn't have to go through the process over and over again. It's also a better way to keep your information safe because you're giving us a one time application. Everything's encrypted and hashed. And then you don't have to give out your personal information time and time again. Jenny, this is awesome. And I think this is uh, it. It's such a. I would, this is not even like a nice to have. I think this is, we're going to get to a world and I think we're in a world where this might be a need to have. And that's a really good spot to be in. Um, are you proud of this, by the way? This is such a great idea that all started obviously from somebody mistaking care of your dogs <laughs> and faking your own debt. Um, I, I'm very proud of it. And I think, you know, when you talk about those moments of pride, I think when the former head of White House security sits down with you and says, what you're doing is really important. I want to be part of it. And when a federal investigator who is under contract with the federal government to do high level security clearances for DOJ and Homeland Security and the Department of Defense says to you, the background check algorithm you've created is more extensive than anything I've seen except for high level clearance. And the federal government won't allow me to do what you're doing when you're doing your background checks. I'm so proud of what we've built um, in, in theory and in practice and what we're trying to create. The other thing, just because we did talk about the importance of justice early on, we do have a free appeals process. So anybody who gets declined for any reason can appeal, and we have psychological professionals and law enforcement professionals who are available to review the appeal to see whether there were mitigating circumstances that we need to reconsider and whether that person should, in fact, be awarded a safety pin. We, we recognize that people have done things in their past that should not haunt them forever. What we're really looking for is patterns of behavior and the underlying psychology of a behavior and whether you're putting somebody else at risk potentially versus if you have one black mark on your record from 25 years ago. This is great stuff and, and powerful things. And, and you should be proud of this. This is, this is great stuff. I, I love asking this question, Jenny, because obviously you've had a great track record, been successful, been profitable, been a great leader. And you now have a, a, a new thriving business that, that potentially could be literally in every social media channel, everywhere we go when we shop online. But yet we all have off days, days that we're not totally thriving the way we could be. Jenny, if you could, do you have a person that you seek or a process that you go after when you're not thriving to help you get back on the thriving track? Um, I do, but honestly, it's going to sound a little bit silly because of the uh, the catalyst of my business, but really my dogs are among the, <laughs> I don't think that's like, silly at all. There's I this think... pure, there's kind of a pure joy from a dog that, and a complete lack of judgment. Um, but I, it really depends why I'm not thriving. So if I'm not thriving for, for health reasons, there are people that I go to. If I'm not thriving for joy, there are people I go to. Um, and so I, it really depends, but getting myself back on track in any way, I, I reset pretty easily. And I also, um, I used to joke that I wanted to write a book called the art of the wallow. I think sometimes we try, we don't let ourselves go into the, into the depth of, misery enough. And sometimes you just need to be miserable. So if you're going through something <laughs> difficult or your business is struggling or you're going through a breakup or your car broke down in the middle of the highway, like some of these things, or God forbid, you're dealing with, you know, the California wildfire or something. Some of these things are, are traumatic. And when we think that we have to just punch through them instead of going through the, whatever the mourning process is for that, I think we actually do ourselves a disservice. And and I, I'm very metaphorical in my thinking. I think of it like when you crave a piece of pizza and you tell yourself you're on a diet and you can't have it. And then two weeks later, you end up eating a whole pizza. So yeah. I think the importance of kind of going through it, you know, going through those valleys and going through those canyons 
is what lets you go back up the mountain as opposed to just staying in, in the plains. Hey there, if you're enjoying how Lou is connecting with this guest in this interview, then just imagine how impactful he can be in person. As an international speaker and consultant, Lou Diamond is all about getting organizations to thrive through the power of connecting. To learn more about how you can hire Lou to speak at your company, your conference, or your next event, head on over to loudiamond.net and click the book Lou button to learn more. He'll truly get everyone to thrive loud. All right, let's get back to the show. Jenny, give me the give me the BHAG, the big hairy audacious goal for the safety pin technologies company for you. What would you think would be like the the ultimate um, bit of success that would say, "Wow, this this has gone to a level that I could never have imagined." Well, so that's a tricky question because I've imagined it. Okay. I, it's where Let's I expect it. us to be. But I, I will tell you the BHAG is that every major and minor platform that we use every day gives you the option of filtering by safety pin. Whether it's a dating site, I always say, you know, if I can pick a guy between six feet and six two who makes <laughs> between $150,000 and $200,000 a year and has blue eyes, I should be able to filter by safety pin. Um, <laughs> I should be able to filter an Airbnb host by safety pin. I should be able to filter an Uber driver by safety pin. Filter by safety pin on every major and minor um, sharing and peer-to-peer -peer site. That is our big, hairy, audacious goal. Jenny, give all the plugs, places people can learn about you, learn about Safety Pin, social media, websites. It will put it on the show links, but it'll be better coming from you. So Safety Pin Technologies on Facebook, Safety Pin underscore tech on Twitter. Um, I am on Facebook as Jenny Thompson. And um, my Twitter handle, my personal Twitter feed is JCT underscore 212. <laughs> and um, the website where you can learn about safety pin, apply for a safety pin, or send somebody else a safety pin application that's prepaid if you'd like your babysitter, dog walker, housekeeper to apply. That URL is getasafetypin.com. And the application fee is only a dollar. And we've purposely kept it low because we want people to adopt it and use it. And then the first six months is only $6. So if you get approved on day one, you're being charged $7 for six months of a membership. Oh, that's great. Um, and so, yeah, you know, talk about it, share it, apply It's if you, and if you apply and you do not get approved, you will literally be the only person who knows that. <laughs> That's, it, it's a great feature. I, I, I think the users, a lot of people are checking this out and, and a lot of, we have a lot, by the way, we have a lot of dog fans. We're going to have a dog cast one day, Jenny. We're just going to bring all the dogs <laughs> on the show and have them have a, have a, their own podcast. Maybe they'll just bark and listen. It'll be worth worth listening to. So, so Jenny Thompson's signature question here. I'm curious to know where this one goes. What is your all time favorite movie? My all time favorite movie is still Princess Bride. It is the most quotable movie of all time. Um, I could watch it a hundred times. I have, uh, I'm sure. Yeah. I, I was going to ask most notably: Is there a favorite part of that movie? That you always say, like, that's the one part that it doesn't matter where you are. I got to sit and watch that particular piece. I'm sure that's for the whole movie. But one thing that always sticks out for you. I say there are several of them, but um, the uh, the fencing scene between <laughs> the Dread Pryor, Pryor Everts and Inigo Montoya and the like, I am not left handed. So I actually had a <laughs> severe avocado injury last year, like so many uh, of us are these days. And I was in a cast for 12 weeks. It was a really severe cut. And so the I am not left handed became like my constant statement on everything. I would say to people like, I'm fine. I am not left handed. Uh, it's just that scene. I I wish it were my ringtone. I'd answer my phone more if it were. Oh, that's, that's just that's just I, by the way, I saw a recent interview. I guess they hit a, a milestone anniversary for the Princess Bride. I saw an interview with Carrie Elias and Mandy Patinkin. And supposedly that scene only took three takes and that is not an easy scene that they do. Oh my God. But, and, and the no, reason that they stopped all. was that, that they were laughing. And one of the funniest lines there is, I guess Mandy Patinkin says back to, to the masked man at that point, he goes, you are wonderful. You are marvelous. And they just started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny Thompson, yeah, th this has been awesome having you on Thrive Lab. Thank you so much. To all Thank the you so much, uh, Lou. And, and by the way, we, I think we're going to put some plugs here for Safety Pin Technologies, and we're going to figure out, hey, 
who knows? Maybe maybe the Thrive Lab podcast needs to have its own safety pen so people can know <laughs> that this is a great place to go through and a great place to listen to. Maybe one day. You'll have to apply to find out. There you go. And uh, to all our Thrive Lab listeners out there, thank you for joining us. And until next time, keep thriving onward and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. He didn't fall? Inconceivable. You keep using the horn. I don't think it means what you think it means. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes, Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. And follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Thrive Loud. Or find us on the web at thriveloud.com.